if you, you arrive register. any country, yeah. particularly, I guess, if you will be staying there for some time, mm -hmm. you should, you you should. Know, let the, the foreign embassy know, not exactly. just foreign mission there, know that you are in that country. Yes, you see, the, the problem is that many countries uh, will only raise the issue of diplomatic protection on the basis of the factor of nationality. If you are not the nation, uh, national of a country, mm. there will not be any legitimate, no local standing to come and defend you. Um, diplomatic protection has two senses, in terms of public international law and in terms of private international law. Public international law uh, talks about diplomatic protection for accredited government officials to the, to the receiving state. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, that's at the, uh, at the level of the 1961 um, uh, Vienna Convention on Diplomatic um, Relations. So in this case, the, the diplomats are supposed to be inviolable. You cannot uh, attack them. You, they need to be protected. But at the level of uh, private international law, uh, it refers, it deals with uh, foreign nationals living in their country. Like uh, we have uh, community citizens, uh, COA citizens, African citizens living in Nigeria. It is private international law that deals with them. Diplomatic uh, protection can be raised if those foreigners living in Nigeria cannot uh, have access to fairness, to justice. So it is at the level of when there is denial of justice, then their host, uh, their own um, countries country. will now come and ask for protection. But the issue is that you have many people having dual uh, citizenships. So it is the effective nationality, all right, that will determine which country can, can protect. So mm. in the context of the Nigerians that are saying they are not protected, mm. well, um, I agree with you because Look at what uh, President Buhari told um, um, Angela Merkel, Merkel mm. saying that um, Nigerians that are in trouble or trying to go to Europe illegally are on their own. It's a, it's a most unfortunate statement. Mm. Um, it seems to me that the government of Nigeria, all right, uh, think after action. They should... Um, normally think before action. We make statements that are loaded with very serious implications. The ideal thing for our government in this type of situation is this. Mm. Why is it that Nigerians, Africans, are trying to go risking to Europe? Everything. Yes, risking. Mm. That simply means the situational reality back home is, uh, is um, pushing them out mm -hmm. all right mm -hmm. it's not mm -hmm. serving as a pool uh, situation but it's pushing them out i think what uh, our government our president should have said or should have done is simply to discuss with uh, angela merkel a negotiation on how to accommodate those itching to go abroad all right, to say, look, my people want to come to your country. Fine. Can't we have a discussion, a negotiation, a sort of MOU, mm. whereby we can be sending to you 1,000 people, all right, for this type of uh, training, training. etc. Mm. So you need to have a platform. Mm. It is only in Nigeria that a government will be destroying, you know, um, its own citizens, um, discriminating against them, presenting them, in the bad well, we're talking oh, about Nigerians overseas feeling like they're not being protected by their country when things happen to them. Now, I'll take, I'll take it close to home, take it to South Africa. Um, there are lots of Nigerians in South Africa. Those xenophobic attacks happened. Um, what role did our government play in helping out our fellow countrymen who were affected by these killings? Um, 
is again a very difficult question to address. Difficult because we claim here in Nigeria that we do have a um, binational commission type of relationship with South Africa. You know, in our foreign policy and relations, we have many levels of um, collaboration. We do have the general bilateral relations. But under these bilateral relations, a distinction is made at the level of a joint commission. Higher than joint commission, joint commission is an example of that one is the one between Nigeria and Niger Republic, which was established um, as far back as 1970. All right, both countries will accredit um, officers and then they will be looking at issues as they arise. As there are complaints, issues, they, they, they meet at their level and they make recommendations to government. The next level is uh, what they call strategic partnership. Strategic partnership deals essentially with all these uh, generic issues, all right, economic, cultural, and so on and so forth, as they will be presented. Um, as at uh, this morning, there is a new introduction. Uh, strategic partnership, we now have two types. It's a new concept which uh, Femi Adishina, the presidential spokesperson, told us about that. Look, Nigerian government will want to uh, upgrade um, relationship between Nigeria and China from strategic partnership to comprehensive strategic partnership. The, the concept itself is not yet clear because uh, strategic partnership, as it were, all right, comprises all aspects of uh, interstate uh, relations. So where they now use the word comprehensive, it gives the impression now that uh, strategic partnership, as it used to be, is not comprehensive, does not cover the totality of uh, questions. Mm. But while we still leave that one, we, we, we move from a joint commission to strategic partnership, comprehensive strategic partnership. The highest uh, of it all is what we call binational commission. What makes binational commission uh, a bit different is that uh, the, the headship of a delegation, all right, is the vice presidency, while all others that we have mentioned are at the ministerial level. How have this, Why, all of this been able to help Nigerians? He mentioned in, in South Africa. Uh, precisely. That's why I have to give this background analysis to it. Um, Nigeria has this binational commission with uh, only two countries in the world so far. That's the United States and South Africa. All right. By giving you that narration is to let you know that we believe that the highest level of understanding in our foreign relations all right, should be with South Africa and the United okay. States. Now, then comes in the, you know, the, the question you ask, how do we explain, you see, the sufferings, the xenophobic attacks vis-a-vis uh, -vis Nigerians living in South Africa? By now telling you that we have a uh, binational commission type of relationship with South Africa. That means that all that no circumstance should uh, a citizen of Nigeria be subjected to any form of a uh, violent attack. Mm. More so that there is another special agreement. Um, they call it a warning mechanism by which before there will be any attack all right, on any Nigerian, before Nigerian interest okay, can be subject to uh, attack in South Africa and vice versa, look, the warning will have been there. So it's a preventive mechanism. However, the major problem is that it has not worked. Our foreign minister will always tell us 
that uh, government is doing this, is doing that one. And the uh, government is unnecessarily very slow when it comes to acting. The major reason we do know responsible for um, misperception of Nigeria and Nigerian in South Africa is simply because, according to the then uh, foreign minister of South Africa, when we asked her, why are we having these problems? They tried to explain that the um, members of African National Congress mm. relating with us during the anti apartheid struggle, mm. that they were the international group. ANC has the national group and the international group. Mm -hmm. We were relating more with the international group. So the national ANC did not and does not know what rules oh, Nigeria, Nigeria had played. played. Oh, dear. And uh, in fact, it was uh, General Bubamarua, when he was the High Commissioner to South Africa, who drew attention of uh, Abuja Authority to one program in, in South Africa, in Pretoria, radio television program. They were discussing this anti apartheid struggle. The commentators by that time uh, made the point that Nigeria uh, was involved in the anti appetite struggle for economic motivational reasons. That uh, there was no, you know, um, it's not a question of sympathy. Mm. So we came here to look for money, etc. So why should they be concerned about uh, Nigeria? Nigerians. Then that was what prompted, um, I think, then it was uh, Ambassador Adeniji who now said, look, it, it became a desideratum to do research on Nigeria's contributions. And those who knew Nigeria by that time, they are already there one by one. Mm. There is no record. So you go to South Africa as of today, they don't have any record of whatever Nigeria meant to have done. Whereas here, we are saying we have um, been doing well. Mm. This is why when we talk about xenophobic attacks, they look at Nigeria as... Um, people who come to steal their job, their money, mm -hmm. etc., their hostel, mm -hmm. whereas mm -hmm. that is not the truth.